Welcome back to Station Ears, and I've now got a tower of radiators. What are they for? Well, they're just trying to get all of the heat out of this entire cooling system into battle back to the atmosphere, which of course is pretty much an infinite um, sort of heat sink. And if we have a look in here now, this is dropping. Um, uh, in fact, yep, still dropping. Pressure is obviously dropping with it. And we've got some feedback. So why don't we go through the feedback first of all, because lots of people have lots of different ideas of how to run an atmospheric system uh, around here. So we've got this and it's not actually pumping any heat into it at the moment, which probably means we are below 25 degrees in there. Let's just quickly check that out. And if we are, then why don't we just drop some plants in place and let's cancel you. What temperature are we at? We're at 23.24 degrees. Yeah, so this this will be coming on and off periodically. And we can see here that this pipe is at 24 degrees. Uh, that is going to get cooled. Uh, wait a second. The world's 24 degrees. The pipe's minus 11. So we've got lots and lots of radiators out there that will bleed off that heat quite quickly. It was dropping a degree every second or so when it, when we started. When it started, it was a couple of hundred degrees in there, and it's working well. Now, I did get people saying, and this is just feedback from, from last episode, saying, hey, the sun will heat, it will cause the the um the radiators or the radiators to absorb heat from the sun and uh, yeah it'll transfer into the system so you got to protect it with so with a tower yeah that's not really any kind of measurable effect by comparison to these losing the <laughs> losing the heat from inside the heat system so although i did build, build this tower as you can see the sun's out now they they are in range and uh, that is just continuing to drop so that is very good because some people saying, hey, your cooling system will not be able to keep up with when you have lots of plants. Quite possibly. There's no harm. I mean, uh, that's something that we can just plant uh, some got any wheat. Um, yeah, let's just plant some in here, because uh, if you remember last episode, the wheat got a little bit. Um, oh, is that thirsty? No, it's not thirsty. Good. The wheat got a little bit uh, over. Well, not overgrown, but it started to add a lot of heat to the system, which it wasn't able to keep up with. So uh, I would rather see what that is actually up to. Uh, out of here, it's 24 kPa now, and we've got our system that is providing CO2 from outside. I assume we have enough power for it, but uh, let's go and check that out. And depressurize. Here we go. So around back now, and there was a bit of confusion from a couple of comments on how this actually works. Um, we've got a simple system that's pulling in from this passive vent atmosphere, everything that's in here. The only thing that's going through it, however, um, or into the rest of the system is CO2. I've got a CO2 filter here. I did get a good comment, though, saying it's twice as good at it if you put more than one filter, or at least that's what they thought. Um, and that might be something to Take a look for, for the oxygen and for the CO2. It should be, uh, well, it's able, it's able to pull in as much atmosphere as it can, so it's not like it's going to lose uh, CO2 in here. There's like 0.2 moles. Yeah, so very, very little is actually not be already being collected by that. So I don't think we need a filter at the moment, but on the O2 one, maybe, or, you know, on, on any other ones that we add, if we need it to, uh, to do twice the work, then we, we can put two of them in. So, the, more confusion here, uh, hopefully not too much. We've got the rest of it going out here and back into the atmosphere. We're just not collecting it. There's very little point in us collecting it unless we want to later, in which case all we need to do is rip out that passive vent right there and just filter that onto this side of another one of these units. So we bring it out here and then into this direction where we put another one unit here and then we can put an oxygen one and then we could put another one next here and do a nitrogen one but the atmosphere doesn't really have much of each of those so you'd have to just keep leave these running for a long while speaking of which um this is not actually packed up because it's still adding uh atmosphere trying to add as much as it possibly can and it's not very good at it so if we wanted to assist that we could force stuff into this by using lots of active vents set to, you know, obviously inward and uh, force it into the inside of this. But this is already pretty good 
at pulling, so um, we could test that with... I don't think I have any spare pipe around anywhere. We could see if it can pull in parallel through lots and lots of passive vents and if that will actually help it get enough CO2. Um, let me go and have a look what that would take. Hang on. I do actually want to see if we can test that uh, out if possible. All right, here we go. And if you're not aware of what this episode is going to be about, it's going to be about largely atmospheric testing. Um, lots and lots of stuff that we can do to try and improve things and just test out how our systems work. So if we have some passive vents, uh, it may well be that because these are in the same large block, even in uh, an atmosphere, that that won't work as well. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Let's just uh, connect up. Yes, you're going to complain. Um, Three-way corner? No, just a regular junction. T-junction? There we go. So, uh, are you able to now do any more work? Um, let's just put you back in here for a second and grab this. Okay, so it's got uh, nothing in this pipe, so nothing's been backed up. It's quite possible then that it's actually going to do more work on this side. Which is still a bit getting used by our pressure regulator. Now I've got some comments over that saying pressure regulator may not be able to do its job. I also got some comments on this tank saying, hey, this if this tank is going to be um, it's going to be too warm, you know, because it's it's going to be higher pressure. It's still minus sixty out here, <laughs> and because it's not backed up yet. And we, even when it is backed up, we can build another equivalent tower to that one if we wanted to, just to keep our tank cool. There'd be no no harm, that's completely passive. As long as it uh, just transmits into this basically infinite heat sink, then we don't have much of an issue. Okay, uh, so that's 1.2 kPa at the moment, and that is, uh, well, let's just have a look. Um, four moles, and the pressure regulator may not be great at it, but let's have a look. So 26 kPa at the moment. We were on 25? Yeah, so it is actually increasing. Uh, but of course, we should get to a point in there where plants, once the sun comes up again, will start converting that back over into CO2. So we'll need to um, you know, watch out for that. While we're at this process, let's go and make sure we've got an oxygen fill station. Um, this is ideal now. Let's just have a look at what we've got in this. We've got uh, 465 kPa or a thousand, mo uh, yeah, a thousand moles of oxygen. Uh, now I could just connect this up, but then it would just equalize pressure with what's in there. What instead we want to do, because uh, this is obviously is much larger volume than our canisters, we want to pressurize this up to a certain amount. So back we go to a pressure regulator, and it should be fine for uh, the use case of filling a canister. Shouldn't have any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, which side's the power on? Uh, it's on that side, isn't it? Eh, probably going to need to move that, aren't I? So we're going to need to put it there, I think. And then, you know, we'll just fit it on. So why do I never have enough pipe? It's almost like this thing plots against me. I end up using it all before I start recording. Uh, pipe analyzer? Nope. Just pipe, please? Nope. Pipe. <laughs> Thankfully, it's very, very fast to make it in this machine, so that's not a problem. Kit pipe. There we go. All right, that's going to make... Uh, oh, we've got plenty of plenty of iron. That's fine. I've got the uh, furnace on, or oh, at least... Do you get some people saying, yes, you don't need to use the arc furnace. You can use the regular furnace. I know. Uh, but I want to sort of have a controllable system when I start to use this stuff. It will be very useful and essentially free by comparison to the, le the electricity. At the moment, I was in an excess, but that is dropping down. So I want to make sure that I... Uh, oops, first of all, st stop the pipe. Uh, second of all, that uh, I may need some more solar panels because uh, it could well be that the amount of stuff that we've got going on now, we've got that filtration, that filtration, pressure regulator here, um, the cooling system will trigger eventually. And what else have we got? Uh, do we have anything else that's active? Well, this pressure regulator I remember to put in, so let's just put, put this one in. And let's just configure this. So, corner. And then a corner here. Okay. 
drop that for a second and grab the um, right tool. Got it right the first time. And make sure I've got the correct end facing forwards. There we go. Tank fill. And then we can just configure this. So uh, I'm going to configure it to... Um, what do we want as a reasonable amount for this? I don't want that much, that's for certain. So let's just decrease that to zero and bring this up to 8 kPa? No, that was 8,000 kPa, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> off by a few orders of magnitude. That's not, <laughs> no problem. So uh, let's go back to, then to zero. And then up we go to hold down control to do this. And we can just bring this up to a fairly high number. Eight's probably safe. Depends on temperature, of course, what, what will happen to that over time, but uh, this gives us a bit of extra leeway. There we go. And we can put you in our background of a suit. Has this got oxygen in it? I thought it was. It does. Good. And we can pop you in there. Nothing's going to happen right now because it's not going to power yet. But we've got power line right here. And let's just grab that. No, let's actually just grab, grab the right thing, Gray. There you go. And drop you off. There we go. So, uh, junction... corner and then we'll just connect we may need we, well we may want to be able to pull the data from that but right now I don't need to worry about it too much uh, I will just be happy with uh, just doing this and then two more straight well three more straight pieces I even need to make more um, more cable soon and if we turn you on, whoops. All right, so let's see what this is at, 1500. And is that emptied the tank? No. Are you going up? 1600, you are going up. So that is filling, just not obviously terribly fast. <laughs> But it is powered, so that will do just fine. And then we can go come past, snatch this, 1679. And of course, once this builds up behind it, we should be fine, I think. So we can obviously improve that a little bit further. But that is an oxygen refill system done, which gets us started. And uh, so we've got food, we've got oxygen. That's both good. Uh, I did also refill my propellant. Propellant's really handy in that you can just use anything really for propellant. So, you know, this general um, sort of tank we got back here that's just got a mix of stuff in it. Yeah, I just disconnect that and just use that as propellant for now. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, there we go. Our plants will be now growing again. So, maybe worthwhile check us checking this system. Let's go and see how we're doing. So, uh, how is it cooling? Minus 49 degrees. That's good. It is increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing, sorry. <laughs> it's decreasing, so that's still good. So I probably don't even need this tower, to be honest. I am fully happy with that. We can't change the temperature measurably out here, it seems. So let's pop down and let's just see what the inside atmosphere is now like. And cancel the pressure. Let's take a look. All right, so we're at 14.7, that's too cold yeah they look wilted we need more temperature which is fine 15 degrees apparently is okay um 15 degrees here 14.8 <laughs> here oh no it's fine it's it's going back okay that's fine so yeah we obviously have an effect from the um, the cool outside air being pumped in here. What's the uh, the, the situation like? Uh, we've got 88 moles of CO2. It's at 15 degrees, and we've got very little O2. Even though those are right next to each other, it is actually still working as far as extracting the O2. I think 
Uh, I will keep an eye on it as we go through the day. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep up with its, the requirements we've got here now. We've got uh, a system that is pretty much constantly running or can constantly run. I also got some feedback from people saying other recipes. So you can make soy uh, oil from soy, I think, and then you can take the potatoes. You get three potatoes per harvest and you can put those together and make french fries, which is apparently the best food to make. So I think I'll probably go and gather those other plants and then we can give them a try at, uh, at growing. Um, and I also will definitely just check the batteries. Are we recharging now? Eh, not measurably. So we may just want to turn off the O2 extraction system for the moment. That'll save some power. And it doesn't much matter if, uh, if we get uh, too much O2 in there for now. We can just switch this back on. And in fact, we could just have it cycle. We could detect how much O2 is in there and switch it on only when we want to. That'd be kind of a neat idea as well. That's something for more advanced use cases as we go forward. I'm definitely going to need more solar panels, aren't I? Yeah, between the episodes, we are going to build a solar array up there. I've decided now. Well, oh, oh, copper, 50, 50 copper just hanging around. All right, what do we do next? We've got cooling working much better, so we're not, not going to overheat. Uh, we should probably think about triggering that if the temperature is too low. That might be an interesting option. Um, I wasn't expecting to need it, but depends whether we've got plants actually growing in here or not, and they're ready to harvest already. So I will go and harvest those, and then we'll come back, back, right back. And yes, I did get a request to see my mining trips. There's really nothing to do in these things other than just, you know, mine out as much as you can of one particular ore. In this case, we're going for uh, gold. And uh, I, what I really could do with the ground penetrating, ground penetrating radar and uh, the ore scanner. They came in relatively late in the actual alpha of the game. Uh, well, of the game so far, I should say. And I was kind of hoping we'd get more gold. We've got 23, and uh, I'm not getting any more of the tooltip that'll give me an indication I'm going to get more. And that's generally the problem, that a lot of these ores have exhausted the stuff that's really close to the surface, that's easy to spot. So I'm having to go further and further out. I think we've exhausted this one. Unless there's any near the surface, uh, I'm not getting the tooltip. Nope. So uh, our base is back over there. That hill makes a really convenient uh, sort of landmark. And uh, the reason why I'm going getting ore is because we want more electronics. Uh, we can't get the ground pen penetration radar just yet because we need to make solder. And uh, yes, it's. Uh, I've said this in Factorio as well. If you're watching the Factorio series, yes, I pronounce it solder. I'm sorry. I'm English. Um, it's our language. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. People are going to complain that I know they are. Um, but we've got solder or solder or soda or whatever you want to actually pronounce that. And that's going to start a pronunciation war. Um, we need that to make the ground penetration radar. We can make the ore scanner module for our little, uh, tablet. We need the, uh, the, the corresponding uh, other block as well to actually get this going. And as you can see, I've already started sort of mining out various bits and pieces. Uh, just close to the base. It's just on the other side of that hill, but we don't have huge amounts left out here. So I am going to get to solder probably next episode. And maybe we'll do an episode where I just make a few bits and pieces of um, just the alloys, because there's quite a few alloys that you can uh, put together uh, in the game. I think there's about four or five. Yeah, so we've got a uh, solder, a uh, constantin, uh, and a couple of others. I can never remember. Ooh. Ooh, hello. Yeah, so we've got at least some more gold here, and uh, whenever I find the gold, I try to mine this, all the stuff out, because it's just um, just so useful. It's not even you know valuable for its own shininess sake, it's just we need it for a lot of the recipes, particularly electronics, and as you know, I tend to do a lot of electronics as the, the series goes on. And um, I, I imagine that most of you have seen the electronics from last last season, if you haven't, feel free to go and take a look at that old season. And if there's anything in there, of course, that you're looking for, uh, do let me know, or that I didn't cover last season. And we'll, of course, we'll cover the, this season because there's quite a few changes when we're dealing with an atmosphere in addition to, uh, you know, just vacuum. So let me just finish off for this uh, sort of hunt for gold. And um, then we'll get back to putting some more electronics in that greenhouse. It seemed to have been working quite well. Um, I did look at the uh, the heat system, the cooling system, 
and it works. Uh, the it's not the um, it's definitely not an issue with the cooling um, wall unit that is able to add heat to that external system just fine. So when it gets too high, when the plants are growing, this is. Oh, let's let's go and uh, let's go and take a look over there. I've got a uh, just over a stack. I did say I'd mine the whole thing out, but I can't remember where that is, so that's fine. Turn you off. Let's go and uh, double check, see how well that's doing. Okay, hopefully all the CO2 has been converted already. I'm just going to grab this air scrubber and take it in here with me. Uh, hopefully it won't inject me through a wall or something like that. Let's uh, press the cycle to interior button. And then we just got to hit cancel. There we go. So in here it's still 25 and it's the, the uh, pressure's fine. Have a look at this. You see this unit is working and it's keeping us to that temperature. I think it will probably shut down in a minute. Let's just give it a second. Uh, see if that's actually working. But as you can have a look in here in the pipe network, that's up to 60 degrees. So what's happening is this, this wall cooler is able to keep this room at 25 degrees just fine. However, the pipe network it's connected to, um, this one right there, it's um, it steadily sort of it gains a bit and then it loses a bit. But overall, there's a very slow trend of a climb in temperature. So if this is working to remove the heat well enough, we don't need another one of those at all. What we need is to get even more heat back out of that pipe quickly, and we obviously don't want it in here and uh, that's sending it out into the atmosphere. So if you have any ideas other than just a lot more radiators and how to get rid of that heat, it's very good at losing the heat as long as uh, as long as stuff not being added to it, of course. So I have no concerns about the, the sun. We showed it earlier in the episode. That's not heating it significantly at all. However, oh, there you go. It's, it's actually done its job. Um, but this is still heating up and we want to keep that as cold as possible to keep this as efficient as possible, ideally. Okay, but of course, that's something really going to happen or be a concern when we're growing plants. Now, I am on my own. I'm not going to have the issues of multiplayer server where everyone needs food. However, uh, we did just get some potatoes. So uh, let's just put some of those back in and uh, yeah, we can refill our potatoes. Get some corn and replant that. I'm just going to put that in the reagent processor because I can never remember if it's corn or soy for the oil. So let's just pop you in here and turn you on. Uh, did you give me anything at all? Nope, doesn't look like you did. So it's definitely not the corn. Okay, so let's put some soy in as well. Potato, wheat. Soy still outside? Yeah, it is. I'll go and get it later. That's fine. Let's just grab this uh, scrubber. And the reason, uh, the reason I'm bringing this in here is just to clean the air in here. So let's just drop it. And we need a filter. So let's put a um, pollutant filter. If we have a look at the atmosphere, we've got 0.8 moles. It's not a lot, but I'd rather keep this sort of atmosphere pure. And you can also see, see that um, we have nearly 40% oxygen now. So it's time to turn back on that external system again to take all the oxygen away. And uh, that means we're going to have to resupply with CO2. Again, that, that system is working fine. It is actually backing up. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll show here. Uh, no, it won't show here because, the, it, yeah, I'll show you outside in a second. But it is actually backing up just fine. So we've got the pollutant there. We can turn this on. Uh, <laughs> once I give it a battery, now we can turn you on. There we go, and as you can see, it's getting pollutant. And it's losing oxygen. And it's using up power. So, uh, yeah, it's gathering moles of oxygen in there, and it's pumping out O2, it seems. So in this atmosphere, yep, 0.5 moles, 0.4 near here, so it's working quite well. Okay, here we are at the back, so we can now see this. It's backing up quite nicely. Temperature's still low, so whenever it introduces into the system, it'll be cold. And of course, we will need to probably add a heat system in there just to, to heat it up as it comes in or keep that, that room warm. We also have our tank here, which is the same as it previously was, but this has been here for a little while. We've now got exactly 8,000 kPa, which we can just swap 
and put out another tank in place. So flip them around. And of course, you can extend this. This thing will keep on trying to keep everything on this side to 8,000 kPa. So if you had a multiplayer server, just put another tank refill next to it and connect it with the same piece of pipe and everything will just work fine. So you've got an oxygen refill system. I will, however, start this back up again just to make sure that we have quite a bit uh, of oxygen being pulled in. There we go. And will you tell me how much is in the system? No, probably not, because you're being pushed out, pushed out into the room. But uh, that is going to work well. Between the episodes, I am going to move one of these two. So um, I think I probably want to move this one, the, the re-entry. I'm going to send it across. Well, I'm going to have to do a lot of pipe. I'm going to send it around probably in into this corner here. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to actually do that and there's nothing unique on camera just a lot of running a lot of pipes and you don't need to see that that will just help things along and we'll just shut that off for now just so it doesn't run too too much and lastly uh let's just have a look at uh, an automatic warming system this again should not be too hard i've already seen us doing the cooling system so it'll be very very similar uh, I'm just going to open you. Yes, I know. I yeah, know I'm going to do this in an arc furnace, not the main furnace. I know. I'm sorry. But it's just so fast and so convenient. Just turn things on, turn things on, and go. And I don't have to mess out around with fuel ratios. Once we get to a gas system that will automatically keep this filled with a certain amount of fuel in a certain ratio, and then you can have a second furnace for a different ratio, then it'll be much more convenient just to drop stuff in the top and press go. But uh, that is for another day. And let's just wait for that gold to finish because I need to print off some more circuits. I've put some somewhere in here. Yeah, we've got one logic I.O. So we've already got a temperature sensor in there that reads temperature of the room and we're already comparing it to a certain value. So we're going to need another memory unit that and another math unit. And I think we don't need to worry about a reader, but we do need to worry about a writer. And we're going to write to this and turn it back on again. So this is going to need a logic memory. And that's going to need some gold. Are you finished yet? Oh, it won't be long. One sec. There we go. It's making a logic processor now. Oh, sorry, a logic uh, memory. And then we'll just make a processor after it. So there we go. A processor. And then um, let's put that backpack. And just one one process should do the job and then we can just make lots of cable coil i've got enough uh, copper for that so uh, i should just make it just a few pieces just in case we need it already got seven pieces but uh, you never quite know there's always a bit more and of course this thing just chews through the copper <laughs> makes us quite a lot of cable coil uh 14 15 that's gonna be more than enough i think there we go all right, let's go and assemble this. Again, it will be quite simple to do, or should be. Let's give it a go. Cancel the pressurization. And in here, we're nicely staying static around 34 kPa now. And what's the atmosphere like? I know I've taken all the oxygen out. Um, still 40%, so I need to leave that running for a while and make it more efficient. But I'll just move the other pipe over there. That will do fine. So here we've got log one logic memory, so we may as well put the other one next to it. Um, there's no harm in doing that. I mean, we're out of space doing this. Uh, we're going to need to read that, aren't we? For both sides. Um, yeah, we'll worry about that in a sec. Um, no, we're already reading it. That's fine. Yeah, we don't need to worry about it. No, nope, it's fine. It's only if we wanted pressure, and we don't need pressure for this. So, uh, we want a logic reader. We want a logic writer, sorry, not reader. We can put it around this way. And then we just need a processor. I need to be able to connect this on all sides, don't I? Of course I do when I've got a thing there. Hmm. Okay, let's flip that around, maybe? Let's just grab my tools. Grab the correct tools. Um, can I actually write anywhere here? Oh, we don't have to connect it to anywhere 
reasonable. We connect it to anywhere we like. So I can put it on this end. Yeah, I can put the writer on this end. There we go. So it's going to be a bit weird, but it will work, I think. Ugh, that's annoying as well. One second. Okay, so the gold is now been produced and I've made a, an extra logic IO processor and I've put a memory unit in. We need to set that up with something, but that can go in there in a second. Uh, we're going to need a processor, so let's put that somewhere where we can connect everything to it. Uh, doesn't much matter which way up, Just I'll just have it so I can read it. That's fine, and then this one is going to be a writer, so let's put the writer... Um, can we connect to there? Yeah, so if we rotate this, uh, the writer only needs... Let's just change it to a writer. It only needs three connections, so you can put it right next to a vent like this and it will be fine. Okay, so then we just need to connect this up and that will disconnect the cooling system, I guess, but we should be okay. Uh, so let's just uh, disconnect. I want to say... Hmm. Yeah, let's just disconnect them all while we can. And the one here... And the one here. And then we can see if we can hook everything back up again. So, junction. I hate the rotation system in Station Ears. I hate the rotation system in Station Ears. Uh, that's fine. Let's put another junction there. And one here. And I'll tidy this up later, of course. Oops. Tidy up later. Oop. There we go. Everything should be connected back up. It is. Good. Memory is hooked up. This um, doesn't need a connection other than this way. When I say this way, I obviously mean <laughs> the direction I don't want to go in. And uh, I guess technically we don't need that one. We can just loop it around. So I can just save one piece there. Note, I'm actually saving some, some cable coil. There we go. And there we go. So that's all those connected. Again, with that power disconnection reconnection issue. But otherwise, I think that's everything. Straight. And I have one spare piece. Uh, no, no, I don't have one spare piece. I need to disconnect you. And uh, look at that. No spare cable. <laughs> I don't think I can save anything anywhere either, so... Yep, when I said that we have plenty, uh, I was clearly lying. Let me just grab a screwdriver and we'll set this up. So, uh, this is 298, so that is 25 degrees. We want 20 degrees maybe as the low end. So, if we... Uh, well, 15 is the lowest for the plants, according to the people who are watching. Let me just actually harvest all these. So, I just don't want to... Uh, one thing I actually don't know, and maybe some of you know, put them in the comments below... If, if uh, a plant is finished, if it's uh, harvestable, does it continue to convert CO2 into O2? Because I would expect it to, but that would be quite annoying if I wanted to just keep this atmosphere as CO2. But I guess having free O2 is not going to be, uh, you know, uh, too much of a, a worry. So let's get started. So we need 20 degrees uh, just give it a buffer on top of 15 degrees, so we just got uh, time for this to heat up if it needs to. So 20 on top of 273 is 293, uh, to 300, and then we can just bring it down by 293. Okay, so that's logic memory. I'm going to need the uh, the rename around type. I think I've already. Oh no, I haven't renamed it. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> right, one second. Let's cycle out there. I just moved the renaming tool into my locker, so I'm just going to grab that. Thankfully, it's quite fast to get through this airlock. They have improved it to be a, quite a bit less buggy than when I last played the game. So I'm much happier about that. There's our labeler. Uh, it has batteries. Yes, it does. Good. And let's just cycle and cancel. There we go. Alright, so this one is um, memory temp mem high. Okay, and temp mem low. There we go. Then this, uh, we don't need to worry about the logic math unit too much. 
but we want to is it maths we want we want to compare don't we rather than maths so let's just drop you and it's the same connections so it's no big deal either way logic compare rotate grab our screwdriver and then input is going to be temp mem low is greater than uh in fact no um we want greenhouse temperature yeah greenhouse temperature if it's greater than temp mem low then you're going to output a one okay it's currently one uh okay so actually no we need less than let's get this the wrong way around for some reason yeah that's fine because as soon as it drops below 20 degrees now it's going to say one which is all we need to do to say you let's get the input so temp uh we want this so um uh temp too low question mark and then that means we can just grab the temp to low and output that to the wall heater and it's on state turn that on okay and that's pretty much it set as soon as the temperature drops below 20 it's going to start heating as soon as it goes above 25 it's going to start cooling and uh turn the battery off there we do still need a solution for this. As you can see, I've taken the, the crops out and it's perfectly fine. You know, it's going to cool off just no problem. But if we have lots and lots of crops in the room, it's not going to be this wall heater or wall cooler. We can always add another one with a pipe there. That's no problem whatsoever. It will be the efficiency of this tower or whatever tower we build. Those are quite expensive. They are steel, if I remember correctly. So we do need a solution for those long term. Um, it is working for now, however. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you've got any ideas, do let me know. We've got plenty of feedback from previous episodes, but we do definitely want something passive, as much as passive as possible to keep this to a temperature. And we can just control um, if, you know, we can even build a cooling loop manually if we wanted to. We replace this wall cooler with a volume pump and just pump it into a massive, passive set of radiators. Um, if we want to just create a draft through the entire room, if we wanted to do that. But um, yeah, for now, I'm pretty happy. We've got another set of plants. Uh, they're growing again. Um, clearly, corn is not going to be in the reagent. Presumably, we're just going to get popcorn if I put it in the microwave. Are you going to grow for me? And I'm clearly, clearly going to have to look up the various food recipes in the wiki between the episodes. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate... A few of them next episode, I think, just to get everything going. Um, a good idea that we got from one of the commenters, sorry, can't remember everyone's names. Um, I really should make a list of these. Is also to stop polluting the internal, because obviously we can put the scrubber in there and that will remove the stuff, the pollutants. But of course, it'll get re added if I go through the airlock every time. Is just to put a block here, not an airlock, but just an active vent to a passive vent on the outside. And before you go into the airlock, you can open the outer door, step inside, close it turn on the active vent or have it running constantly if you're into that kind of thing or maybe uh, even like a, a volume pump outside or something along those lines and it will just go into the vacuum before you actually go inside and press cycle and then that will act it will make this act as an airlock just like a vacuum airlock which is which is a pretty good idea i think i'm going to build that next episode uh and uh, yeah have a nice safe zone to keep everything nice and clear then we can put that scrubber back inside and uh, you know carry on going with uh, everything we want to with a, a really pure atmosphere eventually we're going to have a second building i think uh, maybe over here once we move the solar panels and that second building is going to be or you know more of an o2 environment uh, either we'll put chickens in there and have uh, the excess co2 from that building go into this one and the excess o2 from that building go into this one and hopefully the whole thing will balance uh, but yeah we've got a fair bit done today um yeah we've got uh, oxygen refill good and i've got obviously most of it still in my system this seems to be working well we've got enough solar panels but i'm going to move them i don't like them being around here too much to be honest i want more 
buildings out here. We're going to be putting more stuff in there. And we're also going to build upwards as well. So I can't build them here because I need the, you know, the sunlight to come in. But everywhere else, as long as it's not directly in, in line with where these plants are, we should be able to build upwards into buildings. So that will be good. So if you've got any questions from this episode, feel free to let me know in the comments below. More than happy to answer any questions, particularly because some people have problems with um, sort of understanding pressure regulators. Pressure regulators are not great. They're not very fast, but uh, by comparison to a volume pump. But for certain things like this, they will work just fine. You know, there's, there's really no issue with them at the moment. Um, this one is continuing to pile up and it's still quite a nice cool temperature Okay Thanks a lot for watching if you've uh, like feel free to like to like share and subscribe as normal And we'll see you next time for some more station ears